Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Three Principles Global Community Webinar. The Three Principles Global Community, or 3PGC, is a nonprofit organization that's committed to bringing an understanding of the three principles as introduced by Sydney Banks to people throughout the world. Today, we have Natasha Swerdloff and Christy Halverson with us, and they are going to talk about living beyond. Um, Natasha and Christy, thank you so much for joining us, and I'm going to turn it over to you guys now. Oh, thank you, Bonnie, and thanks for, for letting us come. We've actually asked for this, what, six months ago or even longer? Um, so it seems like a long time ago that Christy and I cooked up the idea of, of doing this webinar together because the topic is fascinating. And even though I think we talked about it maybe a year ago, it's still what we wanted to, to speak about today. It was still fresh for us. So just to say something shortly about me, I, I started my journey in discovering the three principles about 10 years ago. And um, it's just been wonderful ever since. I, I was one of these seekers and, and I was always hunting for the next thing. And uh, my search has stopped. Um, it feels like I've, I found what I was looking for. And the discoveries of, of Sydney Banks is, is really what now um, uh, informs my, my, the way I live my life, the way I work, um, all my relationships, the way I think and speak and breathe. <laughs> um, I'm really uh, fortunate and feel really grateful to be part of the 3PGC board. It's very, it's wonderful to be working, um, helping spreading this, this incredibly hopeful message to the world through the board um, that I'm working at. I own the Principles Institute and I have a school, 3P school here in Denmark, where I do trainings and um, coachings and intensives and all those good stuff. Uh, I co-authored the book Coming Home with Dick and Bettinger, which came out in 2016. And it's now out in nine languages and the 10th is coming soon. Uh, so, uh, so that's been fun. So um, yeah, I've been looking forward to this um today so when did we meet christy was it in london or was it in prague first time we met for the first time in london in 2018 the summer of 18 when you thought you knew me but yes. i didn't know you i remember that now yeah you're right 18 <laughs> that was funny yeah yeah well uh yeah, I want to say thank you to everybody here and, and to Bonnie for uh, inviting us on. And, and it, it, it has been quite a while since we first came up with the idea to, to, to have a talk on this subject. And so it's, it's exciting to finally be here. And um, just a little bit about me. I feel like I'm a rather newcomer um, to the principles. I, I uh, kind of stumbled into it in, in the end of 16, but really didn't pay much attention until 2017. And that's kind of when I started diving in. And um, I don't think there's any coincidence that I had this big dream of living on the road and wandering. And um, and I I kind of fell into the principles right before I left on that journey. And in <clears throat> between exploring uh, this, this understanding and uh, living in this way where I really don't know where I'm gonna be living the next night or maybe the next week, um, it's totally changed my life, how I am in life. Um, it's changed, of course, my coaching and my relationships and everything. And um, I just don't recognize the person I was, you know, five years ago. Um, so this has been quite a journey for me. And, and I'm at the place now very similar to Natasha, where like, I'm, I don't think I'm looking anymore. I, I know I'm not looking anymore, but yet I'm seeing more and more. And it's just been a it's been a beautiful, I guess, couple of years now of just kind of the exhale and letting life kind of show me what there is to see. Um, and then just the tidbits about me, if you don't know, I, I sold everything I owned in 2017 and have been living as a wanderer ever since. Um, and I normally don't stay in the same place for more than a few days or a week. And I migrate with, with the weather and, uh, that's about it. And then I have a coaching practice that I, 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 I coach and interact with people through Zoom um, on the road or either meet up with them out and about, which is one of the ways I got to know Natasha was actually vis visiting her in Denmark uh, a few years ago. 
Um, so that's it. And so we're going to be speaking about living beyond. Natasha, do, before I share the story, do you want to um, give just a kind of a synopsis about what we mean by that? Yeah. Well, there's, there's several ways of, of, of seeing living beyond. And so one of the things we want to talk about is what does it mean to go beyond our concept, living beyond the concepts, living beyond what we think about the world and, and who we think we are. Um, and, and we'll be exploring that through um, stories and, and reflections. And so I think we're gonna we're gonna probably be speaking about maybe half an hour, 35 minutes or so. And then we really wanna invite you into the conversation. What are you hearing and, and what res resonates with you? So yeah, jump right in. All right. So um, I, I feel like I live beyond what I can imagine a lot of the time. And a lot of the time that has to do with being out in nature and sometimes it doesn't. And I was just um, in Montana and I went on this, well, I wanted to go on this really beautiful hike to the top of a glacier. And it was, you know, I think it was 11 mile hike. It supposedly was gonna take six hours. And um, thankfully I happened to wake up at three in the morning and thought, well, I'll just go now. So I, I, I drove out there and I started on the trail around six and it was unbelievable to start before sunrise and be the only person out there. So, I didn't really know where I was going. And I eventually found the trail up to the glacier. And about halfway up, I, I was followed by a ram, a really large uh, bighorn sheep, which is you know, the nickname of a ram. And he was walking right behind me, like within about 15 feet, like very close. And I don't know how long he'd been there. Um, but I, as soon as I noticed him, I kept looking back and he just kept following me. And I finally started, wondering do do rams attack humans <laughs> being out in the woods by myself and i so i backed up off the trail and i spoke to him and i was just like come on you can go by because i kind of wanted him in front of me and not not behind me and, and he did he walked around me and then he got back on the trail and kept walking and i was just blown away because people go out there to find the rams and 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 that one found me and and so that was the first beautiful experience. And then I got to the top and I'm standing in front of this massive glacier and this hunk of ice is floating way out in this lake that I'm, it's between me and the glacier. And the wind was blowing so hard. And before I knew it, the glacier had the, the chunk of ice, which is probably as large as a house or maybe two houses, had, ran, had blown into the boulder I was standing on. And I just, again, was standing there like, oh my God, like who could have imagined or wished for this? And I was so enjoying being up there. I was the first one up the trail and I was totally by myself, no humans, just me and the ram and a few animals. And then I started going back down the trail and I was like, oh, great. There was, it was like a, a line of ants, but it was humans all marching up the trail. And I was kind of bummed, like, oh, great, not to deal with this. Um, but it ended up being so amazing. Like, I had so much fun because I was the first one down. People kept stopping and asking me, what's it like at the top? How much further do we have to go? And, and I ended up, much to my disbelief, having just as much fun going down with all the people as I did going up by myself. And when I was just a few miles from the bottom, uh, a gentleman and his, her, his daughter were walking up and they stopped to take a few pictures and I saw them. And then they turned around and headed back down. They weren't going to the top and they were walking behind me and I was walking fairly fast and I was picking berries, which I was doing the whole way up and whole way down. There was wild huckleberries and thimbleberries and I was picking them and eating them throughout the whole hike. And this guy behind me out of the blue says, I hope those aren't poisonous. And I said, well, I hope so too, because I've been eating them all day. And <laughs> And that's how we met. And that, that one interaction turned into about a 40 minute conversation, one in which we never actually looked at each other because I'm hiking with some good pace going forward and he and his daughter are behind me. And we had this beautiful in-depth conversation about traveling the world and, and you name it, all these different things. And I shared with him, he, he was gonna go to Slovenia. And I said, oh, I went to Slovenia. I said, funny story when I was there. Uh, it was raining and my Airbnb host suggested I go to the spa to get out of the house. And I'm a you know modest American girl and I'd never been to a European spa. Well, 
if you haven't been, nobody wears clothes and everybody's together. There's no <laughs> male and female sides. So I was shocked. In fact, the lady checking me in could see the shock in my face and she offered to give my money back. And I said, I'm just, I'll, I'll go. <laughs> I don't know anyone. And the gentleman that had been behind me for, you know, half an hour, 40 minutes at this time, he was from India. And I, I have some very close friends from India and I know how modest people generally are in India. And, and it was so funny because he tripped up and said, oh, the same thing happened to me in Holland. I had the same exact experience. Here I am in a spa and I had no idea. And, and he said something that just touched my soul. And, and I don't know if I'll get his, his words exactly right, but it was something to the fact of, if you can be naked and, uh, with yourself, if you can be, and if you can be naked in front of anyone, more than that, if you can be comfortable being naked and in your own skin, like that's the essence of being comfortable in your own sin, skin is, is being able to be naked in front of others and being comfortable with that and comfortable with yourself and your nakedness. And he said it much more poetically than I just did. But when he said that, like something in my chest just, uh, just shuddered because he was speaking of, of our skin. And I heard it both as our skin and as who we are. You could apply those same words to if, if you're speaking about who we are and how we live. If we're just comfortable in our nakedness, like what is possible then? And and um and I just saw how this that 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 ties right in with with living beyond, like being so comfortable with nakedness and even beyond the nakedness of ourself and whether it's our skin or who we are, but just living beyond and being comfortable with nakedness period and uh so anyways i thought i thought that would be a really cool way to start off this conversation of living beyond um whether or not you ever want to go to a nude spa <laughs> yeah that's how it is in europe <laughs> oh i love that story and and um and to me what i hear i hear several things around it but one of the things is, is this trust, this trust that seems to come more and more in my life um, after um, discovering Sydney Banks and, and, and going deeper into this understanding. Because what has happened is I've started to see how many concepts and beliefs I've been building up all my life. And, and of course, I see it with other people too, but really realizing all the time how I um, bounce up against a wall of, of my own limited beliefs about what's possible, my own judgments about myself, my own um, thinking about, oh, this can't be done. I, I could never do that. I could never go to a spa and get naked in front of other people or, or other things. It's so interesting once we start seeing how we use our conceptual mind to limit ourselves and, and so through the coaching practice I have, and I know that it's the same for, for Christy, seeing, hearing that in, in, in people's um, stories, how they go, no, I could never do that because, and then they start to rationalize it. So, so to me, living beyond is really what happens when we start living beyond our concepts, living beyond what we think is possible. Well, guess what? everything's possible. It's, it's, it's a whole new world. It's living in the feeling of possibility rather than the feeling of my thinking, which is always going to be limiting. So the more that I, that I see the concepts that I build up, the, the stories that I keep telling myself or, or um, just all these limiting beliefs that I've built up through my life, the more I see them, for what they are, which is thought, the more they simply fall away. I don't have to work at them. I don't have to go to therapy. I don't have to talk about it to, to a psychologist. They simply fall away once I see what it is. And so more and more, I feel like my life is guided beautifully now because there's this trust that there's an intelligence behind life that guides me perfectly. 
And one of the things I, I, I love when whenever I speak with Christy and, and uh, especially if you haven't seen it, I really highly recommend her, her webinar um, that she did here for 3PGC, I think two years ago called Kali Wampling, um, where she talks about these beautiful stories um, from her adventures. It's, it's one of the most perfect ways of describing the three principles. Not because she describes them in, in, in like, these are the three principles, but just the whole story is just beautifully um, spoken from that space rather than about it. So, so when we start to see the three principles in action, when we start to see that we are that, that everything is made up from from the three principles, that every single experience that we're having is created from the formless. When we start seeing that the world of form is an illusion, it's an incredible illusion. And I certainly love playing in it because the world of form is beautiful. Giving a big hug to Christy and traveling around and having fun and telling jokes. How wonderful is that? But it's a big difference when you start to see that well, the form is an illusion created from the formless. When you, when you start to see the magic trick that our mind creates for us, then we don't get so pulled in by it. We don't, we don't believe it to be true. What creates our suffering is when we have an experience and we think that that's all that there is. We have an experience and we're not able to distinguish between the experience and the one who is aware of it. Three principles point to what's behind all of experiences, not the actual experiences. When we look to the world of form and we look to the world of experiences, there's gonna be explanations for why am I what, why is this happening to you? If you go to a psychologist, they'll go back in time. If it's a Freud, Freudian psychologist, they'll go in one direction. A Jungian one will go another direction. A, a, a dream therapist will go in a third direction. If you go to an astrologer, they'll make your chart and then they will come with their explanation, right? So, so any anyone we go to out there, and I've gone to all of them, so I've, I've been there, I've done that. None of them had the answer. The answer is much more simple than, than uh, my moon is rising in Libra, right? <laughs> the answer is much more simple. Every single experience is created from the three principles. And I can either be aware of that, which is where the peace is, or I can be captured in the world of form in, the, in my experience. And every time I am, I suffer the consequences of that. Or sometimes I enjoy it because I'm also caught up in great experiences a lot of the time. So the three principles are pointing towards something that when we see it, allows us to live beyond our conceptual mind, the freedom space, the space of love, the space of compassion, the space of, of just really seeing the world in, with completely different eyes. I have so much compassion every time a new client shows up and tells me their worldview and how they limit themselves. And then gently, gently waking them up to who they truly are, that they are spirit, that they are the awareness behind their experiences. And the wonderful thing about the formless is it can't be damaged. It can't be broken. How could it? It doesn't have a form. Now, everything in form, I can take this glass and if I drop it, it's going to splint all over because it has a form. The water is going to go everywhere. But formless can't. The space that, that I'm in right now, nothing that can happen in this room is going to ruin the space. It can't splint. It can't be hurt not the actual space of the room. Sure, the walls can be, can be broken because they are form. So there's a really a deep and very hopeful message that, that Sydney Banks brought to the world in, in showing us that we are the formless. 
dancing into form, playing in the world. But gosh, the, 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 the playing, the dancing is so much more fun when we know our true nature, when we know that we can't do anything wrong, when we know that we are, we are formless. It just makes it more fun. It makes it easier. And, and, and the guiding towards thriving, the guiding towards, well, I wonder where I'll go next. It just becomes much more simple. And I'm glad Natasha brought up fun because I really truly believe that living beyond, like to me, that means not having any clue about what's going to happen, not having preconceived ideas about who I am or who someone else is or how something's supposed to work out. It, it's, it's not predicting what's going to happen. And I can almost guarantee that everyone on this call has experienced this, but we usually do it here and there, like on holiday or if we're going on a quote adventure, like, like, or just imagine say you're going on an adventure to a far off island somewhere for a week's holiday and like the boat can't come to shore so you have to i don't know swim your luggage in and when you get there the i don't know the the place you're going to stay you find out it's 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 a hut in the middle of the forest and and everything that's adding up isn't adding up to what you imagined like it can be either be a horrible disaster or it can be like woohoo <laughs> on this crazy adventure and and the only difference between something um potentially being a disaster if it's not going the way you thought it was going to go and being a glorious adventure is is getting out of our heads on how it was supposed to be and we can be so great at this in little spurts here and there in life but what I've found is most of us say, yeah, 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 but it's time to go back to real life. And this is serious. <laughs> it's, it's serious business. And I know how it's supposed to happen. Like this is supposed to happen at work. This is how my relationship is going to work out. Um, you name it. And, but we get stuck in how we've envisioned or imagined or thought it was going to be. And, and to me, living beyond is bringing back, bringing back the fun and the adventure and the play to life and our best teachers if we want to look to someone of like okay i i want to be more like this go look to kids like kids are our best teachers in this area because for the most part and i'm talking about little kids like you know from from birth to five or six or seven and somewhere somewhere in there before things start getting serious is they just go with the flow. And yeah, they have their temper tantrums and, and, and pity parties, but that's a part of life too, so have those. But then watch how kids play. You know, like a kid doesn't go play to increase their hand-eye coordination or to lose a few pounds or meet their, some new friends. They don't say, I'm gonna go play because fill in the blank. But when kids go play, like not only do they have fun, but they increase their hand-eye coordination. They, they might get in better shape. They probably will make relationships and have closer friends, but that's not the reason they do it. And I think we've been trained as adults that we have reasons for doing things, you know? And, and I used to be someone that went to the gym to work out, to get in shape. And now I haven't been to a gym in years, a, a very long time. One, time. one reason it's hard to carry it around my, in my trailer, but the other is it just doesn't seem like fun at the moment. But I so enjoy getting out and riding a bike or taking a walk or you name it. And, and I can get the same exercise, but I don't say I'm gonna go on a 10 mile hike up to a glacier so that I can you know, lose two pounds and get in shape. I don't do it for that. But I guarantee whatever comes up, like that's part of the, the fun. But living beyond, like another part of living beyond to me is living beyond what I think I'm good at or who I think I am or what I think I can and can't do. And, and just one other quick story popped up and, and it was very soon after the, the, the hike with the ram and the glacier and, the, and the, the conversation about nudity with the gentleman was I wanted to go on this hike, but 
but there's only one of me and I don't, I don't know anybody there. And it was a hike where I, it started at one place and ended 12 miles later. And, and I was kind of stuck on how do I, how do I do this hike? Cause I'm definitely not hiking 12 miles there and back. And this idea popped up and I said, well, there's a lot of people driving up this road really slow. I'll just hitchhike. And then I was thinking, well, what if nobody picks me up? And I'm like, well, then I'll, I'll walk the 12 miles back, you know? And I'm like, I have all day and nothing to do. So I went on this hike and this hike ended up being the most beautiful hike of my entire life. I'd never seen the scenery that I saw there. And I got to the bottom and it was like, all right, this is where the rubber <laughs> meets the road. And I'm just, I got to the side of the road. And I'm like getting ready, like, all right, let's do this. And I stuck my thumb out and the very first car pulled over. And it was almost like I was in shock. He pulled over. And I'm like, really? And he goes, yeah, where are you headed? And I told him, he's like, hop in. And I'm like, oh my God, it was that simple. And I had stayed up for hours trying to figure out how I was going to get from point A to point B. And then finally had the crazy idea of hitchhiking. Even then I kind of worried about it and Googled it. Do other people hitchhike on this road? And just realizing that those hours of, of pondering, like, I had no idea how actually, how easy and fun it would be just to stick my thumb out and the first person picked me up. Now, granted, that might've been luck or it might not have been. It might've been just living in the unknown and staying on the side of the road in all my glory and saying, who's gonna pick me up? And one last caveat to that little story. So I rode in the back of this pickup truck with this husband and wife in the views were even more incredible from the back of this pickup truck of the mountains and we get to the top and we hadn't spoken the whole time because I'm in the back of their truck and they asked me where are you from and I told them and asked them where they're from and I said I travel full-time how long since 2017 and both of them were like oh my god we want to talk to you and I said well I'm heading they're from Wisconsin I said I'm eventually going to get to Wisconsin and they said well come visit us we have a boat we'll take you out on the lake and Blah, blah, blah. So not only did I get a free ride to the top of the mountain, now I have friends and I have, a, have friends to visit in Wisconsin and I have things to do when I get there. And all of this by just taking a chance and saying, well, I guess I'll hitchhike to the top of the mountain. And I'm so glad I didn't have a choice of any other way to get to the top. But that's to me is living beyond. And we, we can do that more than just out on hikes. We can do that with our careers, with our relationships, with every single part of life, when we see beyond how we think things normally happen and really trust. And to me, yeah, like if you know me or heard my stories before, I do a lot of wild and crazy things, but I'm not stupid about it. Like I follow this inner nudging that says, no, you don't do this or no, you don't do that. And I have people ask me this all the time. Are, do you ever feel unsafe? A, a single woman traveling out in no man's land by yourself. And I say, I can honestly say I've, I've never felt unsafe. And I've never ran into trouble. But there have been times where I was going somewhere and suddenly for no other reason other than like, I think I'll go somewhere else. I've had those and I've listened and I've gone somewhere else. And so I, that's why I tell people when they ask me about safety. I said, you know, I've never felt unsafe. I've never been attacked or anything like that before. But there have been times where I can't explain why, but I went somewhere else. And I can only guess that there's something with listening to what I call the tickles of our soul. And they're always there. They're just usually underneath a lot of noise, thinking about all the other things that we think about. So um, in, in a roundabout way, that's, how, what, that's part of what I see about living beyond. I can listen to your stories all day. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I just want to sort of invite everyone listening to, to really look at, you know, what are the limiting thoughts that you have about your life? We, we've all grown up in different societies. Um, mine was, you know, you, you get, you grow up, you go to school, you get an education, you find a husband, you get two kids, you buy a little house and have one or two cars. It was just very, yeah, normal, boring. I, I live a life beyond my wildest dreams. No, I don't live in a palace or, or drive in a Rolls Royce or something. It's not like that. It's, it's completely ordinary. 
but it's beyond my wildest dreams because I just, my life is just so guided by this inner knowing that, that, that uh, Christy calls the, the tickle, tickles of your soul or the nudging of the soul. It's like every, every single day, something nudges me. And it's so interesting. I, 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 I wake up and I go, I wonder what will happen today. You know, I might have some client calls or something, but there's always something that's sort of a new person calls and I really need to speak to you. I, can, I, can I come? I'm like, sure, uh, why don't you come? And so I, I guess I'm speaking with this person today or, or, or my, my father-in-law calls and has needs help with something. And well, I guess I'm helping my father-in-law today. So in between life's things that I have to do, uh, which is sort of scheduled, there's all this opportunity for things to occur because I don't have a fixed idea of, of what's going to happen. And so life becomes exciting. It becomes like an adventure where I don't know what's going to happen next. And how fun is that? And, and, and really what I hear in, in people so often is they'll come to me, they will tell me what their problem is, and then they will self-diagnose. They'll tell me why it is the way that it is. Oh, but of course I'm like this because my parents got divorced when I was six or my dad died when I was 18 or it, the, of course, because I was beat up by other kids when I was 15 or they always self-diagnose. Well, what if that's not true? Yeah. What, if, what if the solution is much simpler than that? What if that story that you've been carrying around for so long crumbles when you start seeing what creates our experiences and how we hold on to them? So, so by inviting you to, to look at what's holding you back, it's really seeing what are the concepts, what are the beliefs that you have about yourself that you can let go of right now. I mean, even really practical things. I was speaking to a friend yesterday and she was saying, this is incredible. She said, I, I only work 24 or five hours a week now. Um, she said, if you'd asked me, she started, uh, she was my client a couple of years ago and she had a full-time job and two little children. And she really wanted to long for being with her children more and, and just being able to take them to school every day and pick them up after school. And, uh, and I said, well, why don't you know, because I have to make the money and I have to, and my boss will never say yes to, and all of these ideas about why it couldn't happen. And, and then yesterday she said, I asked and, and my boss said, okay, 24 hours a week. That's, that's great. Now she, she's living her dream life again, not because she lives in a palace, but because her dream was to take her kids to school at eight, pick them up again at one and, and spend more time with them. I mean, they're only a small ones, right? So living beyond our wildest dreams is really living beyond the concepts that we create for ourselves. And sure, society really helps us with that, <laughs> um, creating stories around what we're supposed to be doing. But it's so interesting, the ones that don't live that way, the ones that sort of um, live beyond that, we, 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 we look at them and we go, oh, that's amazing, Christy, you've been living out of your, your, um, your, your, uh, to call airstream <laughs> for four years um wow that oh i could never do that no because i have obligations and family and da, 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 right and so many people long to live that life and they can probably do it right now if it wasn't for their thinking sure it takes a little bit of planning i we will get that but it's just we hold ourselves back and so to start to see what creates life? What creates experience? I mean, the intelligence behind life, the intelligence that created this whole universe is what's living us, is what's guiding us constantly, is nudging us to move in certain directions. And we have this inner knowing most of the time that's moving us, that's guiding us. And so often we go, no, concept says I can't do it. No, no, that's not possible. No, that's great that Christy can live her life like that. I could never do that because blah, blah, blah. 
So I really want to invite you to, to, to look at what would it mean to you if you could live beyond your concepts? Go beyond what you think is possible. Live in the feeling of possibility. Living in the adventure of life that guides you constantly, that knows better than this little one who thinks she is so clever to the one who actually knows, who's always here, who's always been here, who never goes away, who's been here since I was born, who will be here after I die, right? That guiding. You know, Natasha, when you brought up um, like diagnosis, I something s snapped in my head uh, about remembering um, a, a gift I got from, from a very close, mentor of mine when I was in my early 20s and that was um this mentor she was my basketball coach and she ended up being like my second mom and I remember back I knew her since I was in eighth grade how she used to spend extra time with me like going over spelling and some other different things and she didn't do that with other the other basketball players but I just I didn't know why but I just took it and um my my graduation party from university was at her house and she invited me outside near the end of the day and said, I have your gift. Come meet me outside. And I walk outside and she, I'm like, where's this gift? And what's the big secret? She goes, well, your gift isn't a thing. Your gift is something I've been waiting to tell you for a long, long time since you were, since you were a little kid, since I, when I first met you. And I said, okay. And she goes, you're dyslexic. <laughs> and, and I and I'm like, okay. And this was before Google. And I, I think I might've heard of dyslexic, but I really had no clue about what it meant. And she was a, um, she was a special education teacher as by trade. That's I, when I met her in middle school, she was the basketball coach, but she was also special education. So she identified early on when I was probably 12 or 13 years old that I was dyslexic, but I never knew. And she said she at times had thought about telling me, but then kept saying, no, she's doing fine. Like I was like a almost straight A student in the top of my class. And she goes, I don't know how, but you, you learned your way around it without knowing you had it. So I thought, I don't want this to be a crutch. I'm not gonna tell her, I'll, I'll tell her for her graduation present. And so she told me to go to the library, that was before Google and look it up. And I, <laughs> I looked it up, I'm like, oh my God, I'm dyslexic. But I love that, it was such a gift. Like I can say that I don't, I don't remember any other gifts I got for graduating from university, but I will never forget that one. And it's because it was just a made up diagnosis that said I think different than a lot of other people. And I'm so thankful. Like I feel like throughout life I have, I've had people like her that saw beyond in a different way, but I'm so thankful that I was never labeled that as a kid. And and it's like, not only for children, but for adults, for people of any age, like those labels, they don't usually help us out at all. And so it's, been, it's fun to tell people that story and to admit, yeah, like I don't know my left and rights and I, I get things backwards a lot and I hate reading aloud. That was another thing is I, I despise reading aloud. It's like, ding, 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 <laughs> you know? But to know it's okay not to enjoy reading aloud. I'll still do it when I need to, but I always just thought that was something I didn't prefer to do. And it was better knowing that than thinking I had something wrong with me. And I just think another part of living beyond is, is watch out what we diagnose for ourselves or for other people. And if we do have a diagnosis, that's fine. But know that a lot of times it means that we're just a little different than, than, than others. And hey, being different is fun. And one other thing that came up when Natasha was talking, and then we can kind of turn it over to for questions or conversation, is I feel like I just realized this about a month ago that I'm allergic to what ifs, like really allergic to them. And um, I shared this with a small group uh, the other day, and I, I feel like a couple of them are here. So it's a repeat for them, but new for everyone else. I was with my mom and I went on this long kayak uh, trip down the Snake River. It was like 10 miles in, in uh, Wyoming. And again, my poor mom, she just has to live with me and my crazy ideas. But I'm like, I told her where to pick me up. I said, I'll probably be there in two or three hours. Just pick me up. I'll, <laughs> I'll meet you down river. 
and when I got to the to the place where I was going to meet her, the 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 levels were really low, the water levels, and so there was just muck and green slime for about 30 feet up the bank and I went to step in it and my foot just sunk to the point to where it's like your shoe gets eaten you know like my foot's in the mud up to my knee and I'm pulling my legs out and and I finally make it to the truck where my mom is and I'm just covered in mud and it's just a nasty mess and I look way down the hill where my kayak is sitting in the mud and my mom's like what are we gonna do like there's rules you can't take your kayak away without cleaning it because of microorganisms and she's like we and we don't have water and uh, how are we going to do this? And, and I got so angry. I do get angry and I feel bad if my mom's listening, sorry, but I just got really upset. And I said, I can't live. I, I'm allergic to living in the land of make-believe. Like there's only one thing for me to do right now. And that's get the kayak up to where I'm at. And then when I'm got it here, then I'll know what to do next, but I can't do what ifs. I can't imagine what I need to do to this kayak that is 50 yards down in the mud. And I, I got really upset about making stuff up. And it was funny because I didn't know it until then, but there's something has shifted inside of me where I just, I just can't go there. I can't play in the world of what ifs. I can't imagine things that are going to happen and then plan around my what ifs. And, and I felt bad for uh, being so angry at my mother. And, and it was great because within 10 minutes, it was like water under the bridge. It was fine. It's almost like, yeah, be angry if you're angry. But um, but it ended up being so simple. We got the kayak up. It was a lot cleaner than we thought. I asked a fellow camper and he pointed me to where some water was. Like we were on the road within half an hour with the clean kayak. And I was just like, oh. and when we got in the truck, I said, that's why I don't, I just can't. I, to me, it's a waste of time. It's a waste of energy. It's a waste of, of, of my sanity to imagine what might happen even five minutes from now and try to plan for it. Like I am so in the idea with what's in front of me. And people hear that and think, oh, so you don't plan? No, I plan. When, when the tickle of my soul says to plan, I plan. But other than that, it just doesn't make sense to go into any land of Blake of Lee. I, I live in a world of what is right now, not in the world of what ifs. And I don't know why, but that just feels like it's, it's, it's um, so related to living beyond because it's almost like living before, like living beyond all the made up stories, like living right now, instead of this imagined future that we naturally have been taught is how you do things. So that's it. And unless Tasha, Natasha has anything else, I would no, love to hear from any, anyone else if they have any too. thoughts. I just wanted to say one thing that, 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 that uh, your story sparked in me, which is when we talk about um, uh, being dyslexic or being ADHD, all these labels, we also label ourselves with stuff like, um, oh, I'm a woman who, who, who don't, doesn't do that. Oh, I'm someone who couldn't possibly... So it's not just about those, you know, psychiatric labels. We label ourselves constantly. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm not a person who does that, that kind of thing. So we, we, we just, it's just in our language. And then we, everybody goes, oh, oh, okay. But it's just a label. We just made it up. So I love living beyond what we can make up. Yeah. Well, let's um, turn it over to, uh, to all of you out there. What are, what are you hearing? What resonates with you? What, what questions do you have? We'd love to hear from you. You can either raise your digital hand or if you're able to unmute yourself, go ahead and do that. I just, I just want something to say something, Bonnie. Thank you for sharing uh, both of your stories. Absolutely fabulous. I, I love all of this. And I love um, what uh, Christy was saying, living from what is, not what if. And it's so true. We always live in a life of what isn't versus what is. And uh, my life has changed incredible. I don't, I'm not the same person I was even three years ago. So I understand all of this and it's easy to still get caught up, but when you're there, you're just not there very long. Like you said, it's like a, it's like a virus in a sense, right? It just doesn't even resonate. 
but I absolutely loved uh, your stories. So thank you, ladies, for sharing. Mm, thank you. So Liz. insightful. Jean. Hi, uh, Christy and Natasha, that was really wonderful. And it came at a really good time for me. I just got off a call just before this with a, a group of, it's a travel uh, organization. And we, we were kind of just meeting each other all for the first time. And coming off of that call, I could hear these things going through my head. Oh my God, these people are doing all these wonderful things. They're all so young, they're dynamic, they're engaged. It's like, and I started hearing myself say, you know, what am I doing here? What right do I have to be in this group? And, and so going, just hearing all of this today, I can see how much I've already limiting myself. And it's just the first day in this, with this group and I'm already telling myself these things. And it's really appropriate that I heard this because now I'm aware of what I was telling myself and I can question it and, and push back a little bit, I guess, and keep going forward because I don't know what's going to happen and I'm excited to see, but I don't want to go through it telling myself that I shouldn't be there or, you know, I'm not prepared or, you know, I'm not whatever it is, just all the things that we tell ourselves. So really, really perfect timing. And I thank you so much for that. Oh, wonderful. I, I think you should uh, thank the wisdom that, that you uh, tuned into this tonight, because that was not us. Yeah, okay. yeah, true. Thank you. <laughs> Beautiful, Jean. Great, great. Yeah. Hey, howdy. Uh, thanks. Oh, boy, oh, boy. My chest is heavy. <laughs> I, I, a couple of, for a few weeks ago, I'm not sure when it was now. Um, Christy and I had a had a really fun interaction during a little talkathon I was putting on, and she was describing exactly what she was talking about here, and 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 because I was kind of in this role of interview, I thought, oh, geez, you know, like, um, that sounds so like. Uh, I forget the actual word I was going to say, but something along the, like dangerous or scared or, you know, it sounds like really fearful, you know, and she, and she just like deadpan back at me, like just, why would that be? <laughs> and it just like, it just like, why would that be? <laughs> you know, kind of a thing. It's just, she just floored me. It's like, okay, I'm obviously speaking to somebody at a higher level of understanding here. But um, so I, to, I'll be really brief, but I, today I was interacting with a, with a friend about this. I'm going to go on a 30 day adventure myself on the road uh, with no particular place to go. And the there in where I'm living, there's forest fires, there's mudslides, there's all these different circumstances or events that are happening around me. And they're all on that sort of route where I'm pointing towards. And it was interesting how innocently we come up with meaning behind some of these events, you know, and my friend says, well, maybe the mudslides are telling you that, that you have to take a different route. And I said, well, that's interesting because my sister-in-law says that the mudslides are meaning we shouldn't go. <laughs> <You know? It's> like, <laughs> so, so who am I to believe, right? And, and I, I have, you know, Christy's sort of cottage wobbling uh, sayings in, about unplanning your future and things like that. And it's just so fun to let go, let go, just let's see what happens. I still have, you know, 18 hours before I leave kind of a thing, right? So it's it's just let the adventure begin and we'll see what happens. Well, the mudslides cleared up, the highway opened, you know, there's still fires and other things, but I just feel like I'm safe. I just gonna go and, and I love when you said, when it tickles me to plan, then I'll plan. And I know you were a firefighter and we did emergency 
planning what if scenarios constantly. So I good good on you to to let go of that. Anyways, thank you very much. Thank you, Rick. And have fun. This sounds fun. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm the star of you on Facebook, so I can watch where you head. Well, it's interesting. Real quick, I just want to share about what Rick said about firefighting, because yeah, firefighting. If you if those that don't know me, I had a 14 year career. I was a lieutenant um, firefighter paramedic, which means I was in charge of the fire station. Which means when we showed up on emergency scenes, scenes like technically it was on quote my back to decide. How are we going to save people or put out the house fire or rip apart the car? Um, and we did. We did scenarios after scenarios after scenarios. But what I noticed once I kind of fell into this whole spiritual side of things, I'm like, oh, my gosh, firefighters know this because we're taught like you show up on scene. Number one, it doesn't matter who the idea comes from. It doesn't need to come from the, the lieutenant, or the captain, the very newest person can have an idea and you go with it if it sounds good. And the other part is there are so many, you can only train for so much, but you show up on scene a lot of time and you're just like, whoa, <laughs> like I have never seen this before. I've never planned for it. And you're like, you need, I feel like calling 911. <laughs> like we need some experts. And you're like, wait, I am the expert. Okay. And you can't just walk away. You can't just say, you know, this is above my pay grade. I'm going to take a pass. You're like, all right. I don't know how, I don't know where, and I don't know when we're going to figure this out, but let's just get started. And then you and your team get started. And before you know it, ideas come up or something works and something doesn't. But I can tell you in 14 years of emergency uh, situations, there was never one time where we just gave up and went home. Like in the end, you always figure it out. And that's why it's cool because you do train and train and train in the fire service but I think firefighters and paramedics and anybody in the emergency field, they know about going with your gut. You know, and I, and one last thing is when I first got hired, I had this old grizzly, old gray haired guy come up to me when I was brand new on the job. And he said, Hey, you're going to be in a house fire one day. And the hair on the back of your neck is going to stand up. Listen. And I remember that that was his like one piece of advice was listen to that. Like, don't, don't disregard that. Listen. And so that's where I say, like anybody that kind of goes in harm's way on a regular basis knows that feeling. And so it's cool. And I, I love that Rick brought this up because it kind of went us on a, on a different tangent that the, we all know this. We all know when the hair stands up our neck or our soul gets tickled. And, and it happens to us millions of times a day. From the time we open our eyes in the morning until we shut them in the evening, even that is a tickle. Just choosing when to eat or when to go to the bathroom or when to go to the grocery store, like all of those are the same. It's like, it's not something magical and special that you get once or twice a week. It's something that happens all the time. And that's living beyond is being open to say, yeah, this is as normal as putting my shoes on in the morning. All right, anyone else? I was thinking while you were speaking that I was thinking of my friend Greta, who is, um, she's Danish, but she lives in the United States and uh, she's 94 years old. And I said to Greta, you just you're just full of, of so much life and, and fun and and uh, I said what well, what's your secret and she says well I wake up in the morning and I and I put my feet uh, over the bed and sort of I sit up on my bed and I go I wonder what's going to happen today <laughs> at 94 years old I just love that um and I just wanted to say uh here at, at the end that uh Christy and I have, have created a, a program that we're going to start next year that we're calling Living Beyond. It's going to start in uh, in January. Yep, um, January. In January. And um, you, you can always uh, find more about that on, on Facebook if, if you're following us. But we really want to uh, take a dive through 10 weeks uh, where we where we explore together, where we discover together. So if you're interested in, in, um, in following that journey with us, then we'd love to have you 
yeah. yeah. I can't wait personally. <laughs> Yeah. It was almost meant to be because we waited so long to have this talk. And in the meantime, we we're like, well, let's make this something longer. So yeah, we start mid January. Yeah. Oh, that sounds great. Thank you both so much. This was really a fun webinar. Uh, really loved everything you said. Thank you. I'm going to ask everybody to unmute and say goodbye to you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, 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 Natasha. Bye, Christy. Bye. Bye, 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 Bye,